that have been in my office in the last few years, and it'll continue to be. Um, it, that takes me back. I, I was educated at the University of Guelph. Uh, the Department of Soil Science was quite big at that time. Um, but I was in plant ecology. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, uh, the definition that I have in my mind of soil that I learned at this university back in the 1970s was that soil is the living component of the geosphere. And that's uh, an interesting definition. Some years <coughs> later, when I was at uh, Sir Sanford Fleming College, and I was a professor, and I was uh, uh, teaching an environmental technology, starting a new program. And, and we had, a, I thought, a very exciting course. And I co-taught with an engineer. And it was to, and we were deliberately training our, our people who are going to be environmental technologists to, 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 to work in sort of both sides, the, the natural science and the engineering side of things. And, and so when it came to talking, and it's really quite remarkable, the, the ways the engineers calculate even things like soil moisture content is entirely different in mathematics than the way that we do it in natural sciences. And uh, but, <coughs> the definition of soil, so you know, I co teaching with them, and I would teach the kids that was, it was the living component of the geosphere, and his definition was it was material that could be moved without, removed without blasting. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that what, is, what has happened in the 19, since the 1970s is somehow we've let our society slip more to that definition than perhaps the definition that we used to have. And we've forgotten about the living component of the geosphere, and I'm really pleased that the discussion and the, the models we saw up here earlier are bringing back the life. Um, which has always been there, of course, but uh, somehow we've, we've, we've forgotten it. Anyway, just a couple of things that have really seized uh, my mind. Certainly, uh, it's already been said that the fact that uh, um, there, well, the best way to approach it is this way. My last um, annual report was called uh, Engaging Solutions. And, uh, uh, and the reason, and I go on mostly about other things, but the fact that in Ontario, somehow we've lost the ability. We talk about things, we analyze things, and we don't do anything. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of we're not engaging the kind of solutions, and I guess it's been emphasized uh, relately for me twice. I just came back from a uh, Globe, a uh, uh, big conference out in, uh, in British Columbia, and uh, the, the rhetoric from the politicians out there. You'll listen to the to the BC Premier who had the the governor's Republican governor of Oregon got on and talked about sustainability and renewable energy and how it was driving his economy for the future. He's the Republican governor of Oregon, you know, and and and, and the. And, and she was the, uh, the, the premier of, of, of uh, BC, who was, uh, was touting the same, a very, very positive message of, of uh, uh, and, and it was just, just the Ontario people were standing there saying, yeah, we, we just want to hear people say visionary things and do stuff, right? BC has, of course, carbon. And then I hear it again today that, uh, you know, the thing about Alberta, we, we're frustrated here because we're, um, we're not getting on with things. We, we, we are bogging down, or we're, we're potentially bogging down. We're, we're, we're seeking perhaps perfection when we shouldn't. Or, but, but Alberta, you know, we heard from Karen, Alberta has been chugging along with their less than perfect system, but at least it's forced them to uh, tackle some questions and get some answers. And their res level of resolution is clearly higher than ours, simply because we're trying to, we're still, you know, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? Well, they've already found out what this happens. And until you go out there and make a few mistakes, you're not going to get any answers, right? <laughs> you know, wisdom is the accumulation of lifetime of mistakes. And certainly I'm getting wiser as I get to talk. <laughs> so, uh, but then the other, but the big, big idea for, for me here, I think it's just, it's, it's, you know, perhaps damned obvious as most good ideas are. Uh, but, you know, we, we talked about the precision's not there to create offsets, but neither is the cash there in the carbon cycle to, to pay for any of the changes that have to occur. And we got into an interesting discussion at my table. And it was all around, uh, you know, B saying, well, you know, hell, the, the urban people, you know, they're, they're part of this carbon cycle and they have urban waste. And, 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 and Karen was saying, well, you know, and she got into an elaborate discussion about uh, uh, what's happening in Alberta, but, you know, driven by, you know, large uh, feedstock operators and, and, or feedlot operators and such things and how they're going to manage the waste, waste of it. And I thought, you know, really it is, I mean, to me, it's, it's about, Soil, the soil resource, and protecting it. But what it comes down to, it's about managing carbon in our side. I don't like the term waste in waste management. I know it's it's a it's in my reports because it's an area that the government deals in. But but it's, many of the carbon things in our society are not really waste. You know, we, you'll see that in my reports. We write up about compost, clean compost, importance. But 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 if we're going to we're going to concentrate them and generate them uh, in our especially in our urban areas, we should there should be a tipping fee attached. And the amount of money that's available, potentially, is the amount of money as my, far more than would ever be available in a carbon trading system. The carbon trading can enhance that. The carbon can enrich that.
But the amount of money is really to do with materials management. Then you can actually set up and route things and process things and capture things. And, you know, so I thought, started thinking, you know, well, why aren't we doing that in Ontario? And the reality is, it's a little bit of uh, interesting, is, is that right now we are capturing the carbon waste and we're routing them, but with the FIT contracts to energy production, electricity production only. And maybe we have to be a little more sophisticated. If we've got money to pay for electricity production, and we may or may not have money to pay for carbon sequestration, maybe not much now, but we might have more in the future. But if the big money is in is so-called waste management and materials management, maybe that's where we should be centering our, our focus and activity and look at electricity and carbon as supplemental and a way to bring, you know, close the, to close the cycle, to bring the organic matter back to the land in an affordable economic way. So that's something that's got me thinking you know, today on what I took out of it. And the purpose of today is just that, is to get all of us talking, is to get all of us thinking about new ways or new ways of organizing this, to challenge us and break down and to, uh, uh, there's too many caps, somebody told me, and, uh, and perhaps he's right. I hesitate to reinforce his you know, ego, but uh, <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> but, it, but it is about breaking down the way we, we think about things and, and opening up the, the perspectives to, to new ideas. So uh, everybody hung in here for so long today. It's been a very rich day. I really thank you for coming, and uh, I hope you got something uh, high value out of this. Uh, certainly, uh, we have collectively my eight or nine staff that I have here. If, uh, I've been uh, thank them specifically, and, and Glenn for doing the, the major legwork and, and getting this. Uh, and I guess Yanni too was his assistant, the second in command, um, and getting this done. So thank you, and uh, enjoy your trip home. And uh, some of you, uh, I, and you know, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah.